Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold channel. Today we're going to learn how to create a survey form to use for data collection in the field with Manifold. Manifold works with the uh, Kobo Toolbox uh, ecosystem and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create that survey form in uh, Kobo and then we can use that form to, we can deploy that form to uh, mobile devices like uh, smartphones or uh, tablets or whatever and use them in the field to uh, collect data. Uh, here we are in the uh, account in Kobo Toolbox. We've created a free account for in Kobo Toolbox and that's easy to do. Uh, and I'm now going to add a, a new project that is a new form to Kobo Toolbox. What I have done is I've previously created a project called Restaurants that follows along. It's a copy of the uh, user manual uh, project uh, that describes how to create a form. And we're going to redo that under the name Restaurants 1 so you can see how easy it is to do. So I'm going to click on New to create a new form, a new project. I'm going to click on Build from Scratch. And the title of the project will call uh, Restaurants. try to spell that right here. Restaurants 1 and uh, it's going to be a uh, restaurants in Chartres, uh, which of course is the famous cathedral town in France. Uh, Kobo invites you to uh, specify the sec sector that you're working with in the country so that you can help Kobo Toolbox improve the project. For the uh, product, for the sake of this uh, demo, we're not going to do that. We're just going to click Create Project. And it's going to wait a second, and then uh, here's our blank form. There's nothing in the form, so what we're going to do is we're going to add what are called questions. And a question is a, is a prompt that allows you to add data into the form. And so the first thing I'm going to do is add, add one caption name, which will be the name of the restaurant. Click Add Question. And the, of the many different types of questions that we can ask, we have all these different sorts of uh, ways of acquiring data, including geographic data. We're going to click on text, because that's a simple quet text. Uh, we could add the question hinder, enter name of the restaurant, but come on. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. Let's uh, add another uh, text uh, question called cuisine, which is the uh, type of food in the restaurant. The restaurant serves. That's also going to be a text field. Uh, and uh, let's let's add a field for picking a uh, cost. And we're going to call this cost on a scale of one to five. And uh, we're going to add that question. And this is going to be a range type uh, question, where it's going to start at one, and it's going to end at five and with a step of one. And for the question hint, what I will do is I will enter this call one is a very inexpensive, five is very expensive, so that people understand what, what cost we're talking about here. Let's add another question called uh, comments, which is also going to be a text question to enable people to add any freeform comments that they like about the uh, uh, about the restaurant. And then for our final question, uh, we're going to add a location. We're going to have people pick the location of the restaurant. And uh, for this one, we're going to use a point. We, we can actually create points, lines, or areas. In fact, in, this, in, in the same form, we can, we can do all three of these if we, if we wanted. For this one, we're going to create a point. Um, and uh, the location hint, hint we're, going to, we're going to click the hint here. We're going to make click on the map to mark the location. Now, by default, a, 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 a point, a so-called geopoint uh, question, uh, doesn't produce a map. It just uh, uh, produces a button where you can click on that to collect the uh, current location of the, of the uh, smartphone or whatever device. But we want to use a map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Settings here in this gear icon. And uh, in our settings, there's two things that I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is, is make it a mandatory response. So people must uh, enter a location. And uh, the appearance, uh, we could type in Maps if we just wanted the default maps, but I'm going to change it, make this a little bit more sophisticated, and enter placement map, uh, which is uh, sounds like kind of like a secret text, but that's actually in, in the various uh, points of documentation and discussion, you know, for how to how to use these widget, widgets. And that simply is a type of map where you where you can click by clicking, you move that point to wherever you want it to go. So it's a slightly easier to use. It's the one that I prefer to one. It's the one that I prefer to use. So we're going to click this uh, settings bit closed. And uh, that's the last question that we want. So let's say we have the name, cuisine, cost and scale of 1 to 5, comments, location. That looks pretty good. So we're going to click Save. And uh, that's going to save our form. It's been successfully updated. OK, so let's go back. We could return to the list, project list. And we can see we now have a, a draft form for Restaurants 1. And uh, if we want to use that form, we, we must deploy the form. And when we click Deploy, that's going to generate the form on the uh, Kobo servers. Uh, in a way that it can be used in uh, the Kobo Collect application that running on uh, uh, any Android smartphone or through any browser on any uh, 
uh, any any device, uh, a tablet, Apple telephone, whatever, using a so-called Enketo browser form. And the, the two forms look the same, and they're both based on this. Now, uh, so we've created this, and if we had our smartphone handy, and uh, we logged into our account uh, on the smartphone using Enketo Collect, which is a free thing that you can download from the uh, Google Play Store or whatever, uh, we could immediately use this form to start entering data. Uh, or if we want, we can click Copy here to uh, copy to the uh, Windows clipboard uh, the URL, uh, which uh, which when added, which when launched in any browser of any device anywhere worldwide, will connect you to this form that we've just created, the Restaurants One form on on the Kobo servers. And if you want to see what that form looks like for convenience, we can open it right now in another in another browser tab. So let's click open so you can see how, what that form looks like. So if we were working on an Apple phone or some uh, non-Android device like a Windows tablet or whatever, uh, we'd launch the we'd launch the form, and here you can see the link to it. That's the link that we would use, and uh, here's our form. So that's a pretty good form. Here's the restaurants. We can add the name, cuisine. We can click on the uh, on the scale bar here, uh, add comments, and then we can add a location just by clicking on the location here. Now, I don't like how the default map widget works. Unfortunately, the default map widget does not start off zoomed into anywhere in particular. It's, it starts in starts off zoomed into the entire world, which is really inconvenient. So that every time you want to add a restaurant and say in Chartres, you got to zoom all the way into Chartres and, and to France to add that. So I don't want to do that. That's that's not something that I want to do. So uh, let's ignore this. Uh, let's close this form, and let's and, uh, let's edit this form, and to. Uh, start with an initial view. And so to do that I'm going to edit in form builder and I'm going to come down here to the location form and I'm going to click uh, settings and here in the settings what I want to do is I want to put it, click in a default response and to do that I'm going to use some uh, inside knowledge here uh, I learned how to do this by reading uh, on the various ODK, the Open Data Kit forums uh, Kobo, Toolbox, and Enketo, and ODK uh, open Data Kit are all part of the same ecosystem. They're all based on ODK, Open Data Kit technology. Uh, and uh, so all the widgets that we're using here are common to all of them. Uh, that's an extremely common technology. For example, uh, Esri's uh, Survey123 application is based on this exact same technology. In fact, it uses it in Keto forms, just like Kobo Toolbox. Uh, Survey123 is based on, is written based on the uh, uh, Enketo core library. So all this stuff works with, with Survey123, and you can take Survey123 forms and use them here in Kobo to use them with Manifold as well. Most of them will work on Modified. Anyway, the what the default response says is, is to start with a point that's located at this latitude and this longitude. Uh, with the scene viewed as if it was seen from a height of 10,000 meters uh, with an accuracy of zero. And like I say, I learned how to, how to, how to do that uh, by reading the uh, forms and reading the documentation. Uh, how did I get the altitude? Uh, I, I tried 20,000 meters. That, that was too far zoomed out. So then I tried 10,000 and it seemed to work okay. So that looks good and we're going to a uh, mandatory response here. That's all cool. All right, let's, cl let's click, uh, let's close that setting and now let's click save. So I've now just updated that form, successfully updated, good. Uh, let's close this form. So you can see if you want to make these changes public, you must deploy this form. All right, so let's click redeploy. Overwrite the existing deployment. Okay, let's click okay. Good, deploying. You know, the Kobo servers are thinking. All right, so we've redeployed the form and you can see it now says V2, you know, last modified today at 11.14 a.m. So uh, that's good. And uh, we've just now redeployed the form, and if we want to use it again, uh, we can, you know, click the click the link to get the link to that form, or we can click open. Uh, and by redeploying the form, we have updated the form on on the uh, Enketo servers, on the Kobo servers rather, so that anybody who's using the mobile application, uh, the Enketo Collect mobile application, will get the latest form, and anybody using the browser-based one can will get the latest form also. Let's take a look at the browser-based form, and I'm going to click open, and let's see what it does. Okay, here's the browser-based form, and you can see a new version of this form has been deployed. Refresh this page to load the updated version. All right, let's do that. You know, because sometimes browsers have all kinds of caching in terms of what they do, so that's that's a convenient thing. And uh, now we're looking at the new version of the form. Let's see what it does. I'm going to scroll down here to the uh, location part, and you can see the location uh, widget is now zoomed in uh, more towards Charter. Here's the Great Cathedral and Charters. So let's add a an actual restaurant and. Uh, we're going to start with everybody's favorite restaurant, at least mine, in uh, Chartres, Le Serpent, the Serpent. Cuisine is uh, French, of course. And uh, I think the user manual topic puts in, uses a, 
a scale of uh, a value 3, which is right in the middle of the scale, but it's actually more accurate to write 4 uh, because the Serpent has a wonderful wine list and you know, the moment you start uh, tapping into that wine list, you're going to notch it, you know, notch the average cost of a meal up to here to four, maybe even to five. Uh, it's absolutely my favorite restaurant, Char or Chartres. It's right on Cathedral Square, and uh, unlike many uh, spots, it's actually, you know, locals really like it. So uh, it's the place to go if you live in the, in, in the, in, in the area in Chartres. And uh, it's right here on Cathedral Square. There it is. And uh, let's click here, and you can see the uh, the uh, the location icon. You can drag the location icon there, uh, and that puts it right on the Serpent. Okay, so we've now uh, added a name. We've added a cuisine. Uh, we've cost an, added a cost and scale of one to five. We added comments, and uh, uh, we marked the location. Let's click submit. So that that will now update those uh, forms. Uh, for submissions, and they are queued for submission uh, because uh, if you're working on a mobile device, uh, what it'll do is it'll, it'll check in every five minutes or so and batch upload, you know, the changes that you've made, and you can see that happens more quickly. Re Restaurants one was, su was successfully submitted, great. So if we like, uh, uh, so we've now added a, a new record. Let's go back to the uh, to our uh, dashboard in, in the uh, Kobo uh, uh, toolbox uh, application in our account, and uh, if we like, we can. Uh, uh, take a look at what we've, at, what we've added here to the uh, to the form, and let's go here to uh, our projects and uh, let's see restaurant one, and uh, uh, we can see the full history. We can see what it does. Let's click on data to see what sort of data that we have. We can now see that we've added a uh, one record to that form, so that when we now connect to a Kobo toolbox in Manifold, which the uh, accompanying video will show us how to do, we'll see that we've added the form here. And if we added more items in the form. You know, more records, more restaurants, those would appear here as well. And those would automatically be collected by Manifold as well. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this quick video to learn how to work with forms in Kobo Toolbox. There's an, just an incredible amount of resources out there. Lots of uh, uh, websites, a lot of YouTube videos, uh, lots of documentation. Uh, you can take advantage of resources that are written for uh, Kobo Toolbox, that are written for ODK, ODK that are written for uh, Enketo. And uh, all those can help you uh, guide along to you know, create cool, cooler forms. Uh, there are spectacular amounts of variations that you can do with forms, very so sophisticated forms. Pretty much everything that you ever wanted to do for field data collection, you can do using these forms. And you know what? It's all free, and it all works perfectly with Manifold. So thanks for watching, and goodbye from Manifold land. Make sure to catch that follow-up video that shows you how to, how to use this data uh, in Manifold itself. Goodbye from Manifold land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.